Now, I'm no expert on these things, but Tom Hanks is hardly a sex symbol. He's no Brad Pitt. You never hear about him getting drunk, making a fool of himself, or having lurid love affairs. You never see him at all in the gossip mags. Even he admits he's a bit of a nerd. Yet somehow he's made an extraordinary career out of being very ordinary. His movies have made billions. Just the name Tom Hanks in big letters on the billboards can guarantee success. In fact, he's the biggest earner of them all. Add a couple of Oscars and other assorted accolades, and who said nice guys don't come first? It's a big night for Tom Hanks. We're in Tokyo at the premiere of his latest blockbuster. Thank you. And Hollywood's Mr. Nice Guy is working the line. I'm going to talk to the number one morning show. He sticks to the script. Do I remember this man? Polite and charming. Until he reaches me. Liam, Tom. you're on the road again. <laughs> on the red carpet. Pretty glamorous, isn't it? I don't know how you do it, really. I mean, you, you know, your face is everywhere. People are looking at your every move. You photographers all around you. You've got a fake sincerity up and down the line. I really, I don't know how you do it. The fake sincerity thing. Well, I'm a professional, Liam. I, I think <laughs> I fake my sincerity very well. And here's me thinking you like me. There you well, go. no, you're a very pleasant guy. I got nothing against you. I don't know you that well. You haven't pissed me off yet, so you know. It's still okay. time. Yeah, well, it's yeah. still time. Well, wait, well, wait. We got years to go. <laughs> you get the impression it'd be pretty hard to irritate Tom Hanks. He might be the biggest movie star on the planet, but there are no airs or graces. He's a very, very rare star. Funny, intelligent, and absolutely squeaky clean. Now, there's got to be some dirt somewhere. No, I, I wish it was an image. I wish it was something I could, I could drop. But you ask me, I'll tell you the truth. I don't lie. No, I mean, well, help me out here. I mean, all right, OK. Well, what do you dig, need? Let's dig some dirt. You need some dirt? OK. I floss my teeth. I have flossed my teeth every day for like the last seven years. Can you believe that? Yeah, that's not sounding scandalous. Well, no, it's not a scandal. But when that, that, what that means is I never flossed my teeth once for the previous uh, uh, you know, 43 years or whatever it is. Um, I, uh... You've got nothing. Uh, I got... I, I got nothing. This is my dad. His name's Sam. Scandal or no scandal, the fact is he's been extraordinarily successful. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. His movies have pulled in more than $4 billion at the box office <laughs> and made him one of Hollywood's wealthiest actors. Put it away. They're too close together. You don't have a clear shot. Yes, I do. Put this rumor to rest, if you will, sure. one way or the other. Uh, but uh, the word is that from your new movie, Angels and Demons, yeah. you will be the highest paid actor ever, some 50 million US, which translates to what, about 70 million Australian? Is that true? Is it true? I, it could be. I'm not saying it ain't. So. Well, I suppose it's the same question I'd ask a Wall Street banker. Uh, I mean, is anyone worth that much? No. <laughs> no, they're not. I'm not. Uh, but at, at the same time, it, it, it's a frivolous business at the end of the day because it's all supply and demand. If, uh, if it does well, then I, I, make a, I make a nice, tasty piece of cake. It's true. Can't lie. Mm. Whether or not I, anybody deserves it. Look, cops deserve that money. School teachers deserve that money. Um, people who, you know, you know, run food banks, they deserve that money. And I'd like to think that I wake up in the morning and... And, uh, and do my part in order to make the world a better place. Tom's world these days is very different to where he began. His parents divorced when he was just four years old. Tom and his five siblings had a chaotic childhood traveling from place to place as his dad and stepmother chased work. So with all those brothers and sisters and stepbrothers and stepsisters, mm -hmm. you still had a fairly lonely childhood, did you? I discovered in a good way my, my preoccupation with sort of like stories and art or whatever creativity you can call it when you're uh, eight or nine or ten years old was a good combat for, for loneliness, you know. I developed a real great attachment for going to school. I like school. Other kids will cut school. I thought school was kind of a great place. There was action there. <laughs> but I knew something was going down there that would generate some sort of a laugh or some sort of a routine, or I would belong to something bigger than myself. How long have you two been dressing up like women? <laughs> the loner had found his talent, making people laugh. 
His early work was mostly forgettable, but then came a guest spot on Happy Days, starring Ron Howard, now one of Hollywood's top directors. When you first met Tom, mm -hmm. you were still Richie Cunningham. Well, I was, as a matter of fact. You're next, sister! <laughs> and uh, Tom had done this very flashy uh, guest shot on the show, and, uh, and, and uh, everybody fell in love with him and invited him to come on the, uh, to this one softball game. I remember sitting next to him and just saying hello. And um, it wasn't more than, I think, an 18 months or two years later that I was casting him in, in Splash. Do you speak English? And got him his first big break. Yeah, he was, he was going places uh, because uh, he's really a unique talent. It was the start of a long and productive partnership for Hanks and Howard. The unlikely looking duo went on to make Apollo 13. Houston, we have a problem. And the second biggest grossing movie of all time, The Da Vinci Code. Here, here it is, here it is. And have just teamed up for a fourth time for its sequel. Angels and demons. Tom says, he admits, he was a bit of a geek, a bit of a nerd. You had a reputation at one stage for being a bit of a nerd. But <laughs> you've got together over the years a huge number of awards and millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> the nerds really have had their revenge, haven't they? <laughs> well, we found projects that uh, that uh, that uh, we could uh, that we could do, and I think that look, it, that, that sort of fascination with detail is what makes a nerd. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> And that obsession for detail runs deep. Oh, oh, there we go. Hello. We know you have a very unusual hobby, this collection of old typewriters. Uh-oh. Be careful now. All right, so we've, we've found something reasonably rare in Australia that we'd like to add. A typewriter? <laughs> That's right. The world's most bankable star has a collection of more than 80 antique typewriters. This is just... You know, somebody's junky old portable that was no, taking, no. Take, taking up space in their closet. <laughs> no, no, no. That's one thing. But this is if this is an actual heirloom, an object of art, a, a piece of historical importance. Well, we hope you you, like you're going to intimidate. You're going to intimidate me. And let me let me. Here we go. Are we ready? I hope you have a good one. Da, da, da. Oh dear Lord! Now here, let me tell you about this typewriter. Ah. Now you'll notice the it's a Corona. Corona 3, yeah. But this is no ordinary Corona typewriter. It was owned by the legendary actor Richard Harris and dates back to 1912. Get out. Yeah, yeah. And when he died... I don't deserve this. It went to his wife. His wife sold it, as it turned out, to a fellow in Australia. And now we've, we've brought it back here for you. You guys should never have done this. You're wasting your time. I don't deserve to own Richard Harris's... Except you got a ...coffee play. mug, much less his... Uh, <laughs> And I can almost get the t I can almost get the paper in. Well, let's try it out anyway. Let's see. Let's see then. All right, not all right. I probably screwed it up somehow. But this is a treasure, and I will treasure it for you. Oh, I hope you like it. So thank you very much. Yeah. His sedate hobby is a world away from his on-screen heroics. You called me. In his latest religious whodunit, Hanks's character Robert Langdon has just four hours to save the Vatican from destruction. Kind of annihilation, how violent. A cataclysmic event. It's very far-fetched, but typically he doesn't take it too seriously. Vatican City will be consumed by light. Well, yeah, but it's not accurate, is it? The, the uh, Robert Langdon series. Oh, they're, they're a bunch of hooey. <laughs> you know, there's no amount of antimatter is gonna blow up Rome. <laughs> you know, it's as simple as that. There's a scene of you in the movie, in a pair of Speedos. Now, I want to know, was that a body double? No, that was absolutely me. I volunteered for my non-American swimming apparel. I wanted to look like one of those Australian uh, 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 lifeguards, you in know. Sluggers, <laughs> yeah. What are they called? Sluggers. Sluggers, OK, all right. Has Daniel Craig seen that yet, and is he worried? Man, oh, man. You know, I made, I worked with Danny Craig back when he was just Danny Craig. <laughs> You know, and uh, I don't want to embarrass him, but, you know, the workout regimen, once you take on that gig, your life becomes the workout. You realize that, don't you? You know, like, if there's another Langdon movie, I only have between now and the moment we're happy to that to avoid exercise. Because as soon as I go on the clock, guess where I am? Back I'm in back gym. in the pool. I'm back in that Speedo trying to look like a slugger. 
Unlike so many Hollywood stars, Tom's never really enjoyed the spotlight. When the camera stops rolling, he spends every minute with his family, his four kids and wife of 22 years. It's like that movie. Actress Rita Wilson, who he starred alongside oh in Sleepless in Seattle. That's a chick's movie. Rita Wilson is the most fantastic creature on the planet, as simple as that. We've made uh, uh, most of the, you know, mistakes that anybody can make, but at the same time, we've, we're always in it for the right. There's no secret to this other than marrying the right person. That's it. That's the only thing that is required. You once said that Rita saved your life. What, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, she gave me a, brain, a type of social grace I didn't understand. My family um, is a fractured one. You know, Rita, it comes from, a, she is a, she's, she's Greek, she comes from a family that has a lot of heritage, a family that, uh, that is used to seeing each other all the time, that really can't live without siding up to each other every now and, and saying how to do it. And I didn't realize that that was an option. I didn't realize that that was something that you could, like, make happen until uh, I married Rita Wilson. That's a love story in itself, better than any of your scripts. Oh, it is, it is. And that's why, you know, it's, why are there not, why are there not movies about, 21-year-old marriages, you know? It's always about, it's the same old thing. It's always about falling in love, falling, it's always like boy meets girl, <laughs> boy loses girl, you know, boy gets girl. But you, it, it, the, the happily ever after is always ever after. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Hanks. There's something very decent and proper about Tom Hanks. He's an actor with a social conscience. Fellow citizens, we cannot escape history. He was one of President Obama's most high-profile supporters and looked so at ease at the inauguration ceremony, many wondered if a political career was beckoning. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. You'll run eventually, won't you? No way. Never in a million years. Come on, it's the ultimate trifecta. Reagan, Schwarzenegger, Hanks. See, here's the thing. Ronald Reagan, they stopped giving him jobs. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not a I'm not a political animal. But I am a uh, I am I, I pay attention to the cultural zeitgeist that's going on, and politics is a big part of it. Particularly when hey man, your 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 country is at war, you know, and it is for eight years, and there's so much important stuff that's going on. I pay attention to it, but I don't try to influence any more than my own opinions. <laughs> Fans will be relieved to hear that Tom is sticking to acting. But his days of playing the fresh-faced big kid are firmly behind him. Next thing you know, you're 52. Yeah, in a good way. Yeah. You know, wink of an eye, all right. And you don't, you don't even, I'm not, you're not even reminded of how old you are until you see those clips from, <laughs> from a long time ago. You're like, who's that kid? Oh, that's me, son of a gun. There is, of course, one role where Tom never ages, where any imperfection stable. can be erased in a second. And there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello? Oh, yeah. ah! Tom's back for the third part of the Toy Story juggernaut next year. Sorry, howdy. My name is Woody. What's Woody what been doing for the past 10 years? Well, professional responsibility tells me that I should keep it as cryptic as possible. So I would say that I, th let's just say, Come on. let's say that there's a, are the toys gonna be sent to the attic or not? Let's leave it at that. Oh, that's a. How about that? But you like kids' movies, don't you? Well, I like movies that everybody can relate to, you know? When the young, when the, when the dad and the mom can appreciate it on one level and everybody else can see it on their own level as well, I, I think that's what the great, all the great films have been able to do. See, Mr. Nice Guy, we've come full circle. I can't help it. So you leave me with no dirt, there's no scandal, nothing. But wait till you get the, my t the typewritten letter that I'm gonna send to you. It's gonna be, it's gonna have foul language, <laughs> and it's gonna have the confessions on paper that I will not give you on, uh, on, on video, but you'll get it all, you'll get it all. I can hardly wait. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.